Hey, in this video we're going to create a series of numbers and insert them inside a list. And we're going to recreate the same behavior as a built-in predicate in Prolog called numList. And numList just gives you back a range of numbers inside a list. So 1 to 5 is our range. We can also give neg negative starting point and all it will also create the range. So we're going to rename our predicate to be something different so it doesn't clash with the built-in predicate. And the general strategy here is, is we'll use tower recursion, so we'll make use of an accumulator variable, which we'll initially set to an empty list, so we can progressively add to this list as we recurse down. And this suggests that we probably don't want the caller to be aware of the fact that we're using an accumulator, so we'll hard code this value ourselves and, and create a, a helper predicate because, yeah, they don't need to be concerned with us using an accumulator. Helper. And, yeah, we'll just pass through the values, but we'll hard code the accumulator. So the accumulator is going to be in the third argument position. And this means that, yeah, when we, when we get started, all that's going to happen is that we're going to pass through the same values, so 5 is going to be past 3, and the rest is just going to be in the third argument position as an accumulator, and then the list stays the same. So now this is the, the helper is going to process the recursion for us, so we just need to work out the recipe of what we're going to do. So just thinking through it, there's a couple of things that we probably need to do and first of all we want to add the end number to the accumula accumulator that gets passed in so add to the accumulator so that will mean that the accumulator is now 5 and we want to make progress towards the base case so because we want to keep progressively adding to the accumulator the next call to our cells, we want to add 4 to this accumulator. So it would be a good idea now to decrement the end value. Decrement n by 1. Then at this stage we probably want to call our cells again. Which is the recursion. And that looks pretty good with what we need to do at the moment. We might need to change it a bit. We'll see if we can see any other patterns that we might need to change. Um, yeah, that looks good. So we call ourselves again. This time, 4 is passed in. And we add to the accumulator. So the accumulator is now 4 and 5. We decrement ourselves by 1 again and we call ourselves again, so call ourselves again now this value is 3 accumulator is now 3 and 4 and 5 sort of happens back to front because what's actually happening is the it will look something like this when we do it we'll take the end value and append it or concatenate it with the accumulator so if you write this out in full, what it represents is that 3 is end, then we have a bar, and then the previous accumulator that was passed in above us, which is 4 and 5. And remember that the bar here removes and unpacks the elements in this list. So it will remove the list, right, and then it will just unpack the elements inside it. So this is how you end up with 3 and 4 and 5. We just continue on, basically. Just keep calling ourselves until we start uh, reducing it to the lowest point that we can go. So the accumulator is there for now 2, 3, 4 and 5. Keep going. Accumulator is now 1. Oh, the, the end is now 1, sorry, and 1 gets added to the accumulator. Call 
ourselves again and see what happens. This is pretty much how I work out the base case. So I just try and recognize patterns. And append zero to this list of the accumulator. But if you notice that our start says one, so we've gone too far here. We don't we don't want this, so this instantly sort of flags that we need a base case somewhere around here. So if you look at a pattern here, the start number never changes. It's always constant at one. So but then if you look at end, end's the one that is reducing each time. So we need, our base case needs to match um, when end is less than the start. Because when start and end are the same, we still want to keep going. But when end drops below start, we want to stop. So we'll just make a note here to say that our base case condition end is less than start. That's when we want to stop. So once the base case triggers, it will stop and then we'll bind the accumulator value back to the list, uh, which is the list will then, once the accumulator is binded to the list, the result will be pushed up to the query core so that they can see. And I'll demonstrate this as we go, but there is one last condition that we need to look at, and that is when the base case finishes, then the recursion will keep happening because we don't have a condition in the recursion helper to suggest when it should stop because if we don't have a condition here it's just going to keep going until like infinitely minus until we run out of memory minus one minus two minus three etc so we want the condition to be we keep recursing while end is greater than equal to the start number because this is like the tipping point when start and end are the same we keep going and when end is always greater than start we want to keep going it's only when end drops below start that we need to stop so therefore we can just say that we can keep recursing while end is greater than or equal to start and this condition needs to be first because there's no point doing all this stuff when this stuff isn't correct so that needs to be the very first thing so if this fails then the recursion will stop um, but while it's true then we keep recursing so let's just get stuck in and do the code so very first thing is we don't want the client to see the accumulator so we need to sort of provide an interface a public interface for them to call so my num list start end list because it's a rule we need this so now we do the rule body now this is where we do our helper my num list helper we just want to pass through the start and end values but we want to hard code the accumulator because this must always be to start with an empty list otherwise we're not going to get the correct result so this is our helper we need to implement our helper now this will be another rule so our third argument we know is going to be the accumulator so we can just give that a descriptive variable name and now we can go ahead and start doing our recipe here so the first thing our recipe says is we need to put this condition here to start the recursion to control when the recursion stops and starts so if this is true then we'll go ahead and do this we want to add to the accumulator so we can do this in two ways I'll show you one way to do it new accumulator is equal to the end combined or concatenated with the existing accumulator and then we said we want to decrement n by 1 minus 1 
And then we say we want to cool ourselves again. Say so we want to make progress to the base case, so we need to make sure the end is updated. We want to pass through our result that we've calculated here, because if we append a five here to make the new accumulator, and the person below us needs five to be their accumulator so they can append four to our existing value of five. And that looks good. So you can either create a new variable here, but it's sort of a bit redundant. You don't need it because you can you can shortcut this in Prolog and just put this in the spot that you need it. So we want the accumulator to be the end concatenated with accumulator, so we might as well just stick it in the third argument position because that's where the accumulator belongs. And this is the same thing as updating it. Um, but you can't do that with uh, arithmetic of adding and subtracting numbers. You have to do the decrementing of end uh, in a new variable. And again, you can't write end is n minus 1 because end already has a value, so you can't rebind a value to a, a variable that already has a value. So you just need to give it another variable name here. And then this is when we recursively call ourselves and we, we repeat all these steps here until we get to the base case. So now we need the base case rule. Give it the same name. And we can't really match on anything in the rule head. I mean, start and end. We have no real control of what start and end are going to be. They can, they'll be any number. So we'll just do that. But we want to take the accumulator, which will be stuck into here. So we want to take this list and bind it to a variable accumulator. And then we want to transfer this list here to be in the result list. So again, we just call it the same name. and by calling it the same name, this will mean that the list 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is going to be binded to... Just imagine this is the base case down here. So this list is going to be binded to this variable. These variables have the same name. And that means that the third argument variable above us is going to be binded to this list as well, which is going to be pushed up to the very top, uh, which the query caller will be able to see the final result. And that looks all good at the moment, but we still need to actually do the condition. We said that the base case condition is when uh, is met when end is less than start. So when end is less than start. So each time we call the helper the base case will be checked. So if any stage that end is less than start, then we'll take the accumulator in the third argument position and bind it to whatever is in the last argument position, which is uh, what will happen when we reach the very end and we'll do this binding and then we'll bind to the third uh, or the last argument position above us, which will uh, cascade the result back up and yeah that's all we have to do there so it's pretty much just getting these two variables right and we'll have a go at we'll save it and run it and see what happens so just reload the file my list my num list one to five we'll go one to six this one to six start with minus two minus two it looks to be working fine and I'll just do a small example here one to three and do a trace I'll just go through this trace and 
I'll talk about in a second. So yeah, the trace works basically just to summarize the whole process to make it clear. When this list variable up here is has a memory, it's, it's basically this memory address up here. Just say it, it's in memory somewhere. So this list variable here is G339. Notice all these stack frames here have this same variable 339. So as we go down, all of them have the same memory address. So they point to the same place. I think you get the idea. So when we get to the base case, so here's the base case here. Um, the base case is here. So when we get to the base case, this list here is binded to the accumulator. And when we bind to the accumulator, because they have the same variable name, G339 gets binded to this list here. So that means that this list here gets shoved in the shared memory address, so therefore the original caller can see it. And this process here is just bubbling back up, but because we've already binded the list to the shared memory address, the caller can instantly see it, which is why you end up seeing um, the, the final result printed to the console. But yeah, hopefully that uh, is clear and shows you sort of the process of figuring out what the conditions could be. But I tend just to try and match up patterns and uh, see where I end up. But yeah, thanks for watching.